everyone was telling me that the big uh, crowd was over at Powder Ridge or something by the Fred Myers, and they said there are thousands of people over there. So I guess that was kind of the neighborhood thing to be over in that other area. But I saw a couple T-Rexes that I thought, gosh, those costumes are so bulbous and klutzy that it's dangerous, actually, for the little, little kids. At least at that age, they don't have far to fall. You know, that's kind of good for them. My communications professor said that he saw one of those T-Rexes that was like 10 feet tall. And there was a little three-foot child piled in it. Well, my favorite, my favorite commercial. My communications professor. What one of one of my favorite commercials is an Audi. This isn't it. Felt like the king of the world. Could walk out the door with a, a terrified people. Makes you feel alive. He thinks things are always going to stay the same until one day. But 25 million kids in two days. The once king Rex. Well, I became a laughing stock. I lost the, the, the lust for life that I had. My friends try to help. This is just a sport, you know, healthy body, a healthy mind. It wasn't the case for me. All I wanted to do was stay in bed. And one day, I'm walking along this road. There it is. Piloted driving. It's quite hard to convey the feelings that one, one has. Magic is the feeling. It was absolute magic. It completed me. <laughs> and I really got that sense of, I'm back. That's, uh... The last days of Emmanuel Kant. En français. That's a French film. Ma chérie, excitons la salive. Cette opération exige un très haut degré de fermeté dans la résolution. Je sais. The point they're making here is here comes Kant. Oh, it's time for us to, to go back. You know, recess is over. Notice his uh, servant follows him with an umbrella, even on a sunny day, just in case. Where you going? What's going on? Yeah, so as they got yep, back to work. You know, in other words, they're they're telling their time by his. But he was very popular. Had lots of. But and by the way, this is when he's el elderly. And he didn't start out elderly. He started out. As an infant, 
<laughs> kind of the way, you know, all of us do. You know, it's kind of, you know, I mean, all the imagery you get of him is an old guy. You know, but clearly, that's not the way things started. I want to show you how he goes to bed. I can find. This is an old movie too, by the way. So the lack of color is because they didn't know you could do it. Yet. Just trying to figure out how to do without his servant, because his servant decided to get married. idea it's it's there if you feel like watching it and I think you can click and have English captions maybe oh well but you get the idea not the most thrilling movie I, I but I, I haven't found very many movies about his life, so <laughs> for some reason, I don't know. Not very exciting. Um, however, get some of my resources that I've accumulated here. Notice that um, one of the things I forgot to mention uh, last class that I wanted to cover. Whoa, that's not it. There it is. Um, was this one? I had mentioned. Adam Smith, and I never did ask or even mention him. Adam Smith was a good friend of David Hume, uh, a little bit younger, uh, influenced by David Hume, um, and, and they stayed good friends uh, 
until they uh, until David Goom passed away. Um, a little bit hard for them to, to uh, see one another uh, frequently because um, Adam Smith ended up being a professor in uh, Glasgow, however you say it. Did I come close? Any Scottish folks? Glasgow? Um, that's the one side. And uh, David Hume uh, was a librarian at Edinburgh, which is the other side. So, you know, there's about half a day's worth of, of uh, rough travel, I guess, to get back and forth. But um, then they had other friends the same. Uh, the uh, one who made uh, a statue of uh, uh, Adam Smith also made the tomb that I showed you for uh, um, David Hume. So, Hume's tomb. Yes? Did you ever find that one that shows you the name of the library? No, I read the article and it still didn't make sense to me. It's definitely something to do with their interpretation of his life and, and his values. Because what they said was that his values are no longer the values of our university. Did they say which one? But no, they didn't say which one. But I'm thinking uh, uh, at the time, uh, he, I'm pretty sure he had slaves uh, on the farm, because I'm sure he didn't farm, you know. That he was, you know, one of the one who owned the farm and probably hired some hands to do it, even though it was in, uh, uh, wasn't it Rhode Island, New Hampshire? No, it wasn't New Hampshire, it had to be uh, Rhode Island. Um, so, I mean, still, you know, back then, that was before the revolution and everything. Um, that was marketing. Yeah. But, um, but in any case, Adam Smith is famous as an economist, which, I mean, we would certainly call him a philosopher, but his focus was on the economy and how the economy worked. Uh, and he's, um, uh, you know, the theory of moral sentiments is, is one of his um, uh, important works that hardly anyone ever mentions. But part two, or actually part one, was uh, the causes of the wealth of nations. We usually just say the wealth of nations. And that's, um, I guess the most important element of that is where they, he talks about the invisible hand that seems to enable capitalism uh, uh, to compete and cr create this kind of effect where, where there's constant improvement by competition. Different corporations or, or companies will compete with one another make a product, the other corporation will make it better so that, you know, it's it's more competitive and then people, you know, so there's kind of an invisible hand that, that directs this. And that's kind of uh, significant uh, with him. Um, so I should have mentioned him and I did not. So there, now I did. Um, and I have to come up with a different question today for our quiz question, because I actually already ended up using this one a little uh, early, uh, because it actually goes more with George Barclay uh, and that issue of, you know, the tree. Did everybody get the little uh, <coughs> picture of the sign? <laughs> I got that yesterday, and I thought, oh, there you go. See, you, you need to know this question in order for you to appreciate even contemporary uh, humor, which uh, that was supposed to be a sign at a veterinarian, you know, so, and I, I'd sent it to my wife. We used to have chihuahuas. My mother-in-law raised them. Uh, she lived in Las Vegas, and you know, the first one she sent us via FedEx. Honest to Pete, it had arrived via FedEx at the airport in October. That she couldn't send it to us during the summer because that was considered too hot. It would be bad on the dog. Uh, but October, it was considered cool enough. Well, the poor thing arrived from Las Vegas, and we already had snow here. You know, and it was a year old, and a, a, you know what a typical white Chihuahua looked just like Chloe, and in fact was Princess. You know, uh, her name was Vegas, uh, Vegas Princess. Uh, but in any case, uh, so we had princess for about 15 years or so, and what a pain in the butt those things are. 
Uh, my wife loved it, and, and I loved it too, even though it peed all over the damn place. And you know, and and you know, I had to sleep up on the bed. You know, it wasn't like you know, it could find places to sleep, but no, it, it wanted to be up with us. And, and you know, you imagine once you have chihuahuas lying in the middle of the two of you, that kind of changes your relationship. Uh, in any case, um, but I'll have to come up with a, a new. Um, New quiz question for today. Any ideas? What's a good quiz question for today? Anybody familiar with? Go, pardon? Well, that's kind of what I just asked for. Yeah. So, what question do you have in mind? That that would work. <laughs> That would work, because I would still mean I would need an input from each of you on what quiz question you would suggest. So there, how's that? Quiz question, you're, you're, you ask me. You ask me a quiz question. So, okay, so that's today's quiz question. Good, thank you. Excellent. Um, so, Emmanuel Kant. Notice the French spell it with an E. That's pretty weird. Um, um, born in Königsberg. If you look Königsberg up today, uh, it's not there uh, because they changed the name and it's now Kaliningrad, which um, is in honor of Kalinin, whoever Kalinin was, instead of the king. You know, this is just. Uh, socialism at work, basically. Um, but it's uh, actually one of the prettiest cities uh, that were uh, was part of the Soviet Union, I think. Um, and actually, still today, it's fairly pretty. It's and, and Kaliningrad is actually part of Russia, even though it's the odd uh, city. If you're familiar with the dilemma, that it's not in. in uh, it's not physically connected to Russia, so they have to go through uh, um, a foreign country, which is part of NATO, <laughs> to get to it. Um, so that ends up being a little bit of an odd situation for Russia, uh, and causes a lot of tension. They have a, a railroad, uh, and they have uh, a road that parallels it, and I, I suppose a lot of the traffic happens through um, Air traffic, but also um, it's a port. You know, it's it's one of the, their major ports. So an awful lot of, of products uh, are transported between Russia and Kaliningrad through through the, um, the railroad. In any case, uh, he was born there. The uh, Russians did build a memorial to Kant, a museum to Kant, which is uh, in the house that he lived in as a kid. Uh, um, and I, I suppose you could go visit it if you, if you ever want to, uh, or visit it on online. Um, if you use Google Earth, you won't see anything except a little blurry thing uh, on the ground because you, you don't have any uh, anyone with updated uh, equipment going in and taking pictures that way. But I think there's probably pictures online of, of Kant's uh, museum in Kaliningrad, the 